Hello and welcome, I'm John Garlick and I'm here with Sheriff Matthew Wade and this is Calhoun County's Most Wanted. Sheriff? It's always good to be on the show. You know, it's uh, July's coming up quickly. It's hard to believe we're halfway through oh 2021. Gosh. I know. So like we just started. So. It does, literally, like we just started. Absolutely. So your guys didn't just start catching criminals last week, no, but we, they did great. Let's look at the count. Yeah, six arrests this week. Always, never have let us down. Brings the count up to 4,781 people put in jail and taken off the streets, all because we have a good relationship with our community and we appreciate that and we don't want to let you down and keep that uh, relationship strong. So. Always doing a good job, Sheriff Deputy, Sheriff's Office. Halfway through the year, that means we're coming up on July 4th. You know, July 4th is one of my favorite holidays. You know, I love seeing all the flags out in people's homes and um, today's times, you know, America needs needs to celebrate our independence and our, and our coming together as a country and um, you know but that brings along all the things that people get upset about too you know fireworks 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 seem to be loved by people and hated by others and they all seem to live next to each other <laughs> you know your neighbor loves them and you hate them you got a dog they don't care you know they, they're shooting them over your house so you know every city has different uh, laws about fireworks in un where we are uh, in rural portions of the county, there's really no laws against them. Just make sure that you're doing stuff that's safe. Don't shoot fireworks onto somebody else's property. But you know, nothing replaces just being a good neighbor. Yeah. You know, a little understanding from both sides always helps. You know, it gets a certain hour, cut it off. You know, don't don't leave your dogs outside to be tortured by them. And the other side is, is you know, your neighbors have got dogs. Try to do it in a manner that's furthest away from them. I mean, you know, the art of uh, caring about others never grows old. So during this time, people get angry with their neighbors a lot. And uh, we ask that you try to just be a good neighbor. You know, and the other thing is, is don't drink and drive. Yeah, don't drink and drive. You know, get a, get a designated driver. So July 4th, great holiday. Use some common sense. Don't drink and drive. And don't shoot fireworks too late into the night. Be considerate. And be alert because we've got the first half of our lineup coming up just after this break here on Cowan County's Most Wanted. Hi, I'm Nancy Hilton with the Calhoun County Sheriff's Office. The long-awaited COVID vaccine is now available. Eventually, all citizens who want the vaccine will be able to get one. At this time, there are scammers taking advantage of this dire situation. There are ways you can recognize a scammer who may contact you. Here's what you can be sure of. You cannot pay to put your name on a list to get the vaccine. That is a scam. You cannot pay to get early access to the vaccine. That is a scam. Nobody who is legitimate will call about the vaccine and ask for your social security, bank account, or credit card number. That is a scam. Ignore sales ads for the COVID-19 vaccine. You cannot buy it anywhere. It is only available at federal and state approved locations. Ignore any vaccine offers that say otherwise. Watch for unexpected or unusual texts. Don't open emails, attachments, or links from people you don't know. Don't share your personal, financial, or health information with people you don't know. If you have further questions, contact your local county health department. You can also read updates on the Calhoun County EMA Facebook page or the website www.calhounema.org. Welcome back to this week's lineup. First up, we have Kevin Bernhardt of Anniston, Alabama. Sex Offender Registration Notification Act violation. Marco Trejo Resendez of Oxford, Alabama. Failure to appear, sexual abuse in the first. Mark King of Piedmont, Alabama. Sex Offender Registration Notification Act violation. Alton Sewell of Anniston, Alabama, Probation Violation, Sex Offender Act. John Geyer of Ohatchee, Alabama, Sex Offender Registration Notification Act Violation, Probation Violation. Seaman Howard of Anniston, Alabama, Sex Offender Registration Notification Act Violation. 
Jeremy Empinger of Goodwater, Alabama, Fade to Appear, Sexual Abuse in the Second. If you have any information about these cases, please call the Sheriff's Office at 256-236-6600. If you saw somebody in the lineup that you uh, might know or at least know where they might be at and if you do call the sheriff you call he hall sheriff we got a great guest here today we do jessica epperson Hi. the first national park ranger for the freedom riders national park here in aniston you're thank the first you one thanks so much for having me i am the first full-time park ranger at freedom riders national monument there was, a, well, there was a person here before me, but he was splitting his time in between Birmingham Civil Rights and Freedom Riders National Monument. Yeah, that doesn't count. You're the no. first full-time <laughs> for Aniston. Not okay. that we don't love him. I'll take it. We've deemed you as such. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're going to go down in history. Uh, There'll be a plaque. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, Just don't put my picture next to it. There'll be a plaque with a picture. Oh, no. Uh, right there, Lyric Square. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> this is really exciting. First full-time park ranger. National Park in Anniston. So tell us a little bit of how you got here and how feds got here. How, do, how did this happen? Okay, so um, that's a lot. That's a lot of, that's a lot of question. Um, but <laughs> essentially, there's actually like a group that had been working on, you know, the Freedom Riders Park for a long time and had done a lot of work and brought a lot of recognition to the area and to the event and things of that nature, but in 2017, President Obama used the Antiquities Act to designate Freedom Riders National Monument as a monument, along with several other national parks at that time, including Birmingham Civil Rights National Monument, which is our sister park. Um, and this park is very significant for the events that happened um, here in Anniston, uh, and the park itself consists of the Aniston Greyhound Bus Depot, which is on 1031 Gurney Avenue, right across the street from Downing's store, uh, and the burn site out on Old Birmingham Highway. Uh, if you go to those places right now, the Aniston Bus Depot actually has um, an, a, an exhibit inside at the moment. So Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, the exhibit is open to the public to come and learn about different um, civil rights events in the civil rights movement. So it's a rotating exhibit. It changes about every month um, so and covers different topics. And then the burn site at the moment is, is a field that we are hoping to turn into more of like a memorial walk type um, place where people, we don't want it to be like a one and done type of place. Like I came, I saw, it's good enough, right? We want this to be a place that people return to often. So to make it a place like a memorial walk where they can go and learn about the events that happen there, but also use it as a, as a place to contemplate and to think and to walk and, you know, maybe get their steps in even. <laughs> and then as far as the depot, the plan for that is to turn it into, um, or to restore it to what it was in 1961. So that when people walk inside, they see what people were seeing in 1961. They would see the segregated entrances. They would see segregated bathrooms. They would see the walls dividing people. Uh, we really want it to be a picture in time that will um, give people a better understanding of what segregation felt like because in schools we learn what it is but we don't really understand beyond like people were separated but what does that mean right and so we hope to be able to educate people on that so the park here is very significant and we're hoping that it is something that will you know be supported by the community and that will be uniting for the community as well. Well the sheriff will remember of course the burn site when when it first got put out there there was that sign and, and they burned it. They burned it and and sheriff's office was responsible for protecting that right sheriff we had. We did you know uh, they put that sign out and they burned it and um, still a lot of work to do in our country um, but you know I hate that this that Aniston is, is marked with this but if it is let it be something that's marked as something that's our past not as our present and find a way for us to not forget history but to find a way for it to build us together and be a better community um, you know that was a long time ago and uh, and there's still problems in our country we should be working on but uh, 
you know, love never grows old. It never fails is what the Bible says. So that's yeah. what we'll, we'll put on it. Learning from history is what the National Park Service is all about, I would imagine. And when we get back from our break, you can tell us more about that and more about our cool national park here on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. Welcome back to the second half of the lineup. We have Jonathan Holder of Anniston, Alabama, probation violation, Sex Offender Registration Notification Act. Ezekiel Cruz of Anniston, Alabama, failure to appear, sexual abuse in the second. Tony Sturkey of Anniston, Alabama, probation violation, possession of controlled substance. Nestor Diaz of Anniston, Alabama, failure to appear, obstruction of justice using false identity. Eric Roberts of Jacksonville, Alabama, failure to appear, use and possession of drug paraphernalia. Desmond Gant of Dothan, Alabama, failure to appear, use and possession of drug paraphernalia. If you have any information about these cases, please call the Sheriff's Office at 256-236-6600. Welcome back. We hope you saw somebody in that half of the lineup. If you did, give Sheriff Matthew Way a call. He's just waiting by the phone to hear from you. And we're here with Jessica Epperson, our first National Park Ranger here at the Freedom Riders National Park. National Monument. National Monument. So, told us a little bit of the history there. So what are, you, what are you actually doing at the monument? So I am an education specialist slash park ranger. Um, my job, as long as I've been with the Park Services Education, I was a teacher um, and transitioned into being a park ranger. And so what I really do and what I specialize in is taking the resource that the park provides, so in this case, um, a historical, event, a historical event, the Freedom Riders Movement, or the Civil Rights Movement and the Freedom Riders, and um, taking that and turning it into an education program that can be used in the schools to help supplement education. Also, as a resource in general, as we learn about the Freedom Rides and as we learn about, the more that we learn about them and more that we learn about the Freedom Riders Movement, or sorry, the Civil Rights Movement, we can develop education programs that will help teachers to cover those topics in the classroom. So we can do um, programs in the classroom with teachers. They can come to us in the park, um, however they would like to do that. Um, so that's really one of my major focuses now that we are, we recently celebrated the 60th anniversary. So now that, that, now that we are moving into other things, our priorities are focusing on the education. Um, and not just that, also partnering with organizations in the community like Boys and Girls Club or the YMCA or things like that where we can work with their youth also to teach them about the Park Service, teach them about different programs, teach them about the Civil Rights Movement and things like that. So I've done education only. This is my first uh, time doing um, strictly historical education, so I'm pretty excited about it. And I've only been here since October, so I'm learning a lot and well, hopefully learning all of the things that I need to make sure that I get those programs developed for the teachers. So not just your average park ranger keeping his, you know, every, picnic baskets away from. Oh yeah, well every, <laughs> every time I've encountered a park ranger, whether it be here in Washington uh, DC or any, any park I've gone to, I have found that park rangers are very knowledgeable. Um, they're, they're not just somebody there that says the bathrooms are over here. They're educationalists. They are well versed in their topic and uh, I've always been impressed by what they what y'all have done so um, I, I see a park ranger you know after you listen to one or two of them at a monument you realize they will tell you everything has a purpose and a meaning and, and they know what that purpose and meaning is and explain it so it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing uh, it is amazing I and this is not about me but about my encounter with other park rangers as well you know the as you as we move I mean park rangers tend to move around from park to park and so you know we some are subject matter experts on specific subjects within the park service and the others of us you know we move from park to park and we learn as we you know as we go along so 
it's, it's different for me because I was a high school Spanish teacher. And so for, to go from high school Spanish to talking about the Freedom Riders movement is different, but it's an opportunity for me to learn, you know, where really I may have not, may, I don't want to say failed necessarily, but not grasped completely the concepts when I was in school or not been taught them in school that now I have that opportunity and I can help the community where there may be um, a lack of resources that we can help to provide those. So um, as we move around, we learn, and I am often amazed too by some of the, the park rangers that I've worked with or that I've done tours with as well that they are so knowledgeable about their parks. So it's, it's a great job. Well, and, you're, and it sounds like you're doing a great job at it. So what kind of events and stuff are coming up here that we can be attending? Yeah, we have a couple things on the horizon. We partner a lot with uh, the city of Anniston to work with the community as much as we can. And one of those things that's coming up this weekend actually is the Noble Street Festival. Um, Noble Street, uh, they have a bike. There's going to be like a bike race. And, and we will be set up to provide information about the Freedom Riders National Monument. Our bus depot will be open as well, so people can stop by uh, and check out the exhibit that we have there now, which is, is entitled Emancipation and Its Legacies. And um, so that's one of the things. We have a summer movie series that's happening. We just had our first movie last weekend, was um, se the movie Selma. On July 17th, we're going to be watching 42, which is the Jackie Robinson movie. And August 21st, we will be watching Just Mercy, which is the Michael B. Jordan movie that came out last year. And those will all be shown in Zen Park at 8 o'clock on the third Saturday of the month throughout the summer. So we're really excited about that. We have a Ranger Reads program in the library every the first Tuesday of every month. We read books to the kids in the community who come into the library to talk about, that talk about civil rights topics. And... Uh, that's, That's great. kind of what we have going on. And now. so if they want people want more information, your office is located at 1304 Noble Street. And we also have Facebook where we post all of our stuff on Facebook, uh, Freedom Riders National Monument Facebook page, and our website, um, mps.gov forward slash FRRI is our website. So everything is posted. We send out press releases as well. So Ranger Jessica, thank you for being on the show thank today you. and Thanks enlightening us with all me. of that. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be back with our crazy criminal here on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. Welcome back to our Crime Stopper segment. On June 21st, a Caterpillar mini excavator was reported stolen from a location on Highway 78 East in Anniston. Between June 1st and June 20th, a Taurus 44 Magnum was reported stolen from a vehicle parked on Hillside Drive in Anniston. Between June 8th and June 10th, a Kubata track hole was reported stolen from a location on Landers Road in Jacksonville. On June 28th, a white male with red curly hair entered a business located on Big Valley Drive in Alexandria. This person took two bottles of tequila and quickly fled the scene without paying. If you have any information about these cases, please call the Sheriff's Office at 256-236-6600. Stupid! You're so stupid! Hey, Sheriff, you know, it's uh, time for the crazy criminal. And this week, I think it's special. It is. Um, you know, we're talking about the 4th of July and how you shouldn't drink and drive. I'll give you an example. Uh, this weekend I was at um, what some people refer to as Ohatchee Beach. It's the Ten Island Historic Park over at the dam on Neely Henry. And a guy come up to me and said, hey, that guy was offering alcohol to my kids and he's getting on that motorcycle right now. So I get in my truck and I try to catch up to him. And when I finally do, he's riding in, a, in the wrong lane of traffic with his hands in the air on a motorcycle, <laughs> you know. so. I, I get him stopped and I notice he's got a Mike's Hard Lemonade stuck in his forks where he can drink and go. And uh, unfortunately, he was well beyond the limit of, of driving any vehicle. Pretty obvious, was it? It was pretty obvious and uh, he said, you got me. When I stopped him, he just said, you got me. I said, I got you for what? He goes, you got me. You know, <laughs> and, uh, and not nice guy. It really was a nice guy. Just made a poor choice to drink and drive and his pictures up there. We do uh, Thomas Joseph Smith. 
He's just a local person from Aniston. And like I said, he's a nice guy. He said, he said you got me. But um, you don't want to drive anything, much less a motorcycle, when you're intoxicated and having an alcoholic beverage stuck in your forks of your motorcycle as you drive down the road so you can drink it going in the road is not a good idea either. This 4th of July, we want you to be safe. We want you to be a good neighbor. Be responsible. Get somebody to drive you if you do indulge in uh, intoxicated adult beverages. But um, if you do that, just make sure you be responsible. Sheriff Matthew Wade, always on duty 24-7 doesn't always make arrests, but when he does, they're special. <laughs> I want to thank you for being with us here on Calvin County's Most Wanted. We'll see you again next week, but hopefully not in the lineup on Calvin County's Most Wanted.